Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are looking at another enclosure. This is the Ortur Enclosure 2.0 that they recently released. And if you have the Laser Master 3, you will appreciate this for its slightly larger size over your typical commercial enclosures that are made. Plus it has a few features that I like that we're gonna talk about in a bit. So if you've been looking for an enclosure and wanna know about this one, stay tuned. We're gonna jump right into it. So I've talked about enclosures a fair amount on my channel, uh, mainly because these open frame dialed lasers, while they're great and they're portable uh, for your day-to-day -day use in the workshop and doing smaller projects, it really is much better to run them in an enclosure. It does two things for you. It should help contain the smoke in any vapors and such that are produced by the laser vaporizing material, as well as providing some light protection from any sort of errant beams from the UV light from these dialed lasers. All right, so they do include a nice little manual that will walk you through the build and the assembly. Uh, at first, I was a little concerned about it because what it has is these thinner aluminum frame rails that are all together and then they kind of snap into the sides. But one is, once it is all assembled, it, it is actually fairly sturdy, but it's also lightweight, so it's not so bulky and uh, you don't have a lot of bars getting in your way. So. Um, that was a pleasant surprise for me. Uh, I was a little concerned when I first opened it up, but after getting it assembled, I'm actually fairly happy with it. It is made primarily of this rubberized canvas material, and then once we open it up on the inside, you'll see that it's kind of a lighter color colored material as well, which helps with light reflectivity, but it is also the flame resistant material. Being flame resistant is great. It will help prevent a problem from getting worse, but you shouldn't count it as being uh, flame proof that it's going to take care of a fire and you can ignore it. You still need to monitor these things. You still need to know what's going on because it's only gonna slow down a situation and hopefully allow you to prevent it from becoming worse. So up on top, we have this flap that you can zip and unzip and that exposes this orange plastic that is uh, going to help absorb some of the light, the, the UV light. Uh, I don't know that it is really specifically rated at any wavelength or any optical density, but the color of it should help reduce the uh, intensity of the laser beams. Uh, that being said, on any enclosure, uh, I would always recommend you continue to wear your laser safety goggles as they will provide the best protection for your eyes. However, you can pull this flap down, zip it up, and now the entire thing is opaque and sealed and therefore shouldn't have any light exposure coming out of it. Now over on the left side of it, you will see you have a couple of mesh pockets. This would be good for holding maybe some manuals or other gear. But down here, what is important is that you have these kind of rings and then there's a flap on the inside. What this is gonna do is gonna allow air to get pulled in through these and then your fan is on the other side. We'll look at that in a minute. What I like about this is that it's loose enough that this flap will move out of the way to allow airflow to come in. Uh, however, it's blocking any of the air light beams that might come out. Uh, they have taken some time to ensure that it allows the airflow which you need. You can't have a sealed enclosure and be effective, but it will still take care of uh, helping to block the light. So over on this side, we have a lot of these little loops that can hold various tools and such, and then you have your exhaust fan. Now this is a three inch fan port. Uh, I really wish it was four. It would adapt to uh, more of our exhaust fans and it will allow for even more airflow. But that being said, it is a fairly high powered fan in there and it does seem to move air out. And here I have it just feeding into my CO2, which then has its own exhaust. But in my basement, I would hook this up to my regular air uh, venting system. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. The zippers do just go along the sides. And then you'll see, here's one of those aluminum bars that's strapped in. This just folds up and out of the way. This gives you plenty of access to the laser in here. On the side here, you see that we have then, again, the aluminum hoops, and these are snapped in place all around, holding it in. There's one up front and the side uh, and everywhere. So it, it does hold up pretty well while still, you don't have big thick bars here and uh, it keeps it fairly lightweight. Another interesting feature of this is it does also have a floor. So it is fully contained and not just set up upon the laser. Uh, so that uh, will help you kind of keep any extra debris in there uh, and it'll keep it from having weird airflow kind of coming in from all areas where we're gonna have the air coming in from this side and then coming out this fan in the back. 
Another thing you'll see in here is, as I mentioned, we do have this fan. It's on the inside blowing out, and then the wire comes along the top here. And then in back here, we have this LED light bar strapped to the top. Now I have it hooked up to this cable that then plugs in to the Ortur Laser Master 3, or they provide you an adapter cable that will go to a 24 volts power supply. That power supply is not included, but it is an accessory you would need to purchase if you're not using this with the Laser Master 3. Now one of the cool things about this laser enclosure and having it connected to the Ortur Laser Master 3 through the aux port is that you can then control the fan and the light through either macros or uh, just through the console. So you could actually add a script into at the beginning of every file, turn the fan on, at the end turn it off, uh, same with the light if you wanted to, or we can just set up the commands and uh, or just the buttons here in Lightburn. So for example, we have a macro set up for light on. And you see the light turned on in the enclosure. Same thing for light off, it will turn off. And then as well, fan on. Hopefully you can hear that running. And then fan off as well. So uh, anytime you can add automation, it's, uh, it's a nice feature. And uh, I like, as far as the fan, I would want to leave the fan on for a certain period of time after the job completes. So you might need to look at some sort of delay feature. Uh, and then the light on and off. Generally, I'm gonna, anytime the, I've got the machine on and I'm setting things up, I'm gonna want that on. Uh, but the idea that we can just turn it on and off through here and that it's running through the same power supply, you don't have extra power cables, you don't have extra switches, that's kind of a nice deal. And uh, it's some cool things that you could probably play around with. All right, so if we come into, if you're, if you're on your main screen here, you wanna come into your console and you can simply type commands such as M12, that's gonna turn the light on. M13 should turn the light off. M14, it's gonna turn the fan on. M15 would then turn it off. You also have these macro buttons and if you right click on them, it'll open up this window that allows you to adjust this. So our button label just simply saying light on, type in M12 and then when we come over here and hit light on, that's gonna send the M12 command light off is going to send the M13 command. Same with fan on, fan off for M14 and M15. So those are some of the basic features in Lightburn, how you can set that up through this, uh, the board on the Ortur Laser Master 3. All right, so this is basically a one inch square. I've got the speed down and the power up, so it should be making a pretty dark square box in here. So we'll see if we can see any smoke from this and uh, see, see if we can smell any smoke, and we'll go from there. So far, pretty good. It's creating a pretty black box in there, and uh, I'm not seeing any buildup of smoke. So I think what I'm gonna do this next time is I'm actually gonna turn the fan off, we'll run it, make sure that we're actually accumulating some smoke in there, and then we'll be able to turn it back on and uh, see how quickly it evacuates. Okay, so I've got the exhaust fan and the CO2 off. I've got the exhaust fan in here off. Everything's dead quiet. We're gonna fire up this engrave. We're gonna try to see if we can see some buildup of smoke. Then we'll be able to tell if we can see it but not smell it, that's great. And then once it's done, we'll be able to turn the exhaust fan on and see how well it actually evacuates. So let's do that real quick. Probably not gonna show very well on the camera, but we do have a bit of a haze in there from the smoke. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fan on. We'll see if we can see that escape. So there's the fan on. You can kind of see it moving around a little bit. It's starting to pull up towards the back. And now it looks like it's fairly clear. Let's go ahead and open this up. And there's still some smoke right up on the top here, but it's moving towards the back. The good thing is we couldn't really smell it from the outside. So it does help contain it. I think if you ran it too long, you'd start smelling it on the outside, but then the fan does work to extract it out as well. So there's not much more to say about this. Uh, it 
seem to work pretty well both in blocking or containing the smoke and then being able to extract it. Uh, obviously you would want to run it the full time so it doesn't build up in there but if you did forget about it uh, I would probably say you'd want to run it maybe for a minute or so let it really pull everything out uh, before opening it up to really maximize making sure that air is cycled through. Um, it seems to be a fairly durable canvas and this kind of rubbery on the outside and then fairly kind of smooth on the inside. Uh, it's supposed to be flame retardant as well and uh, fairly lightweight. It, it's not overly heavy. Uh, I'm not, you know, these do come apart and snap so you would be able to fold it down and such. Um, so transportability is probably okay. It's not going to be as quick as some of the others I've seen to uh, that just Velcro together, but uh, as far as not having a bunch of pipes to really fit in one uh, to, to make sure you get assembled together in the right order and such. Um, I think this would go up together faster. So uh, if you're in the shop where you can't leave this set up the full time, you need to fold it down, um, it's, it's plausible. It's probably going to take you, you know, five minutes to uh, set it up, move everything in and tear it down. Um, part of that issue being, you know, I'm not sure you can leave the light in there. You might need to take that out and such. But that being said, um, I think it's a decent option. One of the nice things is that with the Artura Laser Master 3, this does fit it better than some of the others, it being a little bit longer laser front to back, uh, that it gives you that extra depth. So if you are interested in this enclosure, I will have links down below where you can find out more and purchase this. And uh, I, I think if you are looking for one, especially for the Artura Laser Master 3, uh, this is a good one to consider. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope this was informative for you and gave you some insight into this, whether this enclosure will work for you. And so if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those down below. In the meantime, I will be doing more projects, more product reviews, more light burn lessons and more. So if that interests you and I've earned your trust and your respect, uh, hit that subscribe button and you will not miss out on my future videos. Once again, thanks again for stopping by. I will hopefully see you soon, but I hope in the meantime, you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.